Most tourists never see this site, which is called Chinchero, about 40 minutes drive outside of Cusco, the capital of the Inca. But it is quite astonishing, as you can see, the Royal Inca Terracing System, which in the Inca language are called Andene. This site, Chinchero, hosts some of the most beautiful and largest terracing systems in all of the Inca world. As seen, thanks to my quadcopter called Pachacutec. But what's even more curious is the stone you see at the bottom of the screen. Now, what most archaeologists don't accept is the fact that whoever did this work was not the Inca, because the amount of erosion of the stone surfaces is excessive, most likely much more than would be capable in the course of only 500 to 1,000 years. And here we go. Once again, we're flying over the terracing system, and now over this strange cutout stone. It's not one of a kind. There are, in fact, hundreds, if not thousands, of these strange cut and shaped surfaces in the bedrock at every major Inca site, including Machu Picchu, and even at some of the minor sites. And what we believe, or at least what I believe, is that this work was done with lost ancient high technology thousands of years prior to the existence of the Inca in and around Cusco. The question, of course, is who were these people? The Inca were a very advanced civilization, especially as regards agriculture. You can see these beautiful terraces, again called endene, which they produced in profusion. They had so much agricultural capacity that they could easily feed all of their 15 million subjects and had enough stored to last for at least four years. That was part of the success of the great Inca culture, erroneously called an empire. But again, as the quadcopter approaches the large carved stone, you'll see how complex all of these strange features are. Some archaeologists believe that this and other sites like it were quarries. However, the Inca had bronze tools and did not therefore have the technological capability to be able to cut such fine surfaces and the level of erosion through rain and sun and wind is in excess of the timeline of the Inca civilization. Some of the oral traditions refer to these very ancient technological people as the Pirwas. And here we have a brief glimpse over an astonishing Inca work and this work is called Morai. It is far larger than the size of a football stadium. The question is what was its function? It's almost 100 percent sure that the Inca created this amazing terracing system and again conventional archaeology says that the giant circles you just did see and now see again were made as an agricultural experimentation station that the Inca were testing different levels for different crops. However, three years ago German scientists measured the temperature and humidity of each one of the levels and there is no significant difference. So was this a huge stadium of the Inca? Was it for growing agriculture? Or possibly was it for both? There is a celebration that happens every early August when plants are not being grown in Peru and at that time 
this entire area is filled with thousands of people dressed as Inca. These are some of my books. The Real History of Hawaii from Origins to the End of the Monarchy. Legacy, Vintage Photos of Ancient Egypt. My first book, A Brief History of the Inca. A Gringo Guide, which is your guide to Machu Picchu and Cusco. The Inca Before the Conquest. Easter Island, A Guide for Inquisitive Minds. Beyond Machu Picchu, the other megalithic monuments of ancient Peru. Tiwanaku and Pumapunku, a visitor's guide. Crimson Horizon, the mysterious red-haired sea kings of the Pacific. Inca Footprints, walking tours of Cusco in the Sacred Valley of Peru. The Enigma of Cranial Deformation, co-written with David Hatcher Childress. Lost Ancient Technology of Egypt, Lost Ancient Technology of Peru and Bolivia, Machu Picchu Virtual Guide and Secrets Revealed, and Nazca Decoding the Riddle of the Lines.